Hi, I'm Mary Gwen, and today we're going to be talking about grounds for silver point drawing. With silver, you have to have a ground because the silver naturally won't come off onto plain old paper. It's got to have something abrasive that will take up the particles of silver and put it onto your paper. So we're going to talk about several different ways to do that. And the old, the old way of doing it, this was the type of drawing that was used in the Renaissance and the following years after it to through Rembrandt and on because graphite hadn't been invented then or hadn't been discovered then. So they used silver point up until then and they would make a kind of a ground with um, marble dust and uh, rabbit skin glue. And they would adhere that to either a piece of skin or a piece of parchment or something like that that they would draw on. But today we've got some wonderful choices of all kinds of lovely papers. And we'll look at some of those. But the first thing you've got to do is find out what kind of ground you're going to use. This is a plain ground that's called Silver Point Ground. And you can buy that online at anywhere you get your art supplies there. It's called Silver Point Ground. And then this is plain everyday gesso. So you can use, it's a liquid gesso. You can use gesso. And this is clear gesso. And we'll talk about why you would want clear gesso in just a minute. But those are your three options for grounds. This is standard silver point ground, gesso, and clear gesso. So those are all the things that you can use to make your ground. And there are some places online, if you want to do it the old way, you can buy the materials that Michelangelo used for his silver point drawing. You can buy them online. You can get the marble dust and mix up your own. I just can't do all that. I'm too lazy to, to go that far. I just want to squirt it out of a bottle and be done with it. But if you're into doing that kind of alchemy thing, you can find some places online where you can buy those materials. But to put down our, our silver point uh, ground, we've got three different tools here, but there, there's a multitude of tools you could use. But for our purposes today, we're just gonna go over these three types. My favorite is just your plain old dime store sponge, craft sponge. You can get craft sponges by the bag full in all kinds of places. So with a, with a sponge, you can make a really clean, soft surface. And I like to do that. I like mine to be very smooth. I'm not looking to make, to make use of the background. Some people will, and there's some wonderful things that you can do if you want to do that. But I like mine smooth. So I'll use these craft sponges. I love these little craft sponges. And the ground washes right out, so you can use one little cheap sponge over and over. But I put it on in layers like this, and I, I put mine smoothly on because I want a smooth background. But you don't have to do it that way. And I usually put a layer on horizontally, and then come back with a layer on vertically. You'll want it to dry really well between layers before you do that. But if you're looking to make some texture with your background that you want the silver to, you want to use those effects in your silver drawing, you can do a bristle brush like this. It's very rough, it's uneven. So it can make some fabulous textures. And those are fun. Sometimes it's just fun to do that. And you can put it on like I do this way, just horizontally and vertically, or you can just do it like that. Imagine all the wonderful textures you can make if you just do it like that. There's all kinds of fun things you can do, but this bristle brush is a great way to do it. Those uneven bristles, those thick uneven bristles. And then the other option is you can go somewhere in between these two and take a smooth brush. You can put it on with a smooth brush like this. It's very even, it's very soft. These bristles are very soft. So it's not as smooth as the sponge, but it's not as rough as the bristle brush either. So it's a good option for you. You can try that too. So those are, those are our tools. Now we're gonna to get to what surfaces we're gonna use. This is standard watercolor paper in, in rough. Some watercolor paper comes in smooth and rough. And this is the rough. And I, I like the rough because it has what's called tooth on it, the, the texture. And I, I just like that. I think it, it makes the uh, silver point have a little more uh, texture to pull up on the paper, even though I've put the ground on it. I just prefer the, the rough paper. But that's a personal choice too. And I get the kind that's on the block because the block keeps it from curling on the edges when you're putting your surface on there. If you get 140 water, 140 pound watercolor paper or greater, the, the chance of it uh, peeling up on the edges is not as good because it's just not as 
watery is put using plain water like you would in watercolor painting so it's not going to peel up a whole lot but but it could so if you want to you could use the block and then another easy surface to use is just a plain old piece of foam core board from the dollar store so I get just some, a piece of foam core board and put some ground down on that foam core board and you can do all kinds of things with that but but that's a sturdy surface, so you can use that just as easily as you can use the paper. It's kind of, just see how your pen goes across it, your silver point pen, and see what it does, and you might find that's something that you really like. And then here's another option, is a canvas board, a gessoed canvas board that, that people generally think of as for oil painters. You could use that, it's got a nice surface in it too with a really rough texture to it. And if you want it to be a little smoother, you can add a little silver point ground to it and do another layer over that. Or you can add some more gesso and make it even rougher. That's a personal choice too, So, but that's an option. These canvas boards, you can find them anywhere these days, and they're really reasonable priced too. So that's an option that you can do if you like that texture. Some people really love texture. And this is a mixed media board. It's not as thick as the foam core board, but it's a little bit nicer surface. It has a little bit more tooth to it and it fits very nicely in a frame. So I know you're planning to frame your work. Everybody should frame your work. So you're framing your work, this is a nice option. It fits into a frame very nicely and it's easy to work on. And you can use either the smooth or the rough style with the, with your ground on it. But mixed media boards come in all sizes too. Here's another size for it. You can do that. So it's kind of always up to you on what size you want to do, what kind of board surface you want to do. They're all up to you on that. Now here's another option. This is pastel paper. And the pastel paper has kind of a tooth to it. So it's a little bit rougher than uh, some of these smoother boards, and it, but the, the beauty of pastel paper is it's got color. So you can use color with silver point. With, with the silver, you're not gonna get a value change. It's just one value. It's always gonna be one value. So making use of textures, one option with it, but also using color in the background. So in order to do this color in the background, you're gonna have to have a gesso that dries clearly. So you want clear gesso on this so that you can make use of that paper. Uh, another option on top of that is you could, you could add a little charcoal dust to your, your ground and that'll make it, that'll tint it or a little bit of pastel powder you could put in, in your, your, your ground and, and tint, tint that way. Those are, those are other options, but that's pastel paper and that's a, that's a nice way to do it. And then there's another paper that supposedly is designed just for silver point. And I won't even begin to pronounce the name of it because it's a, it's a strange name. You can see the name there in the corner. And I would just butcher that name if I tried to pronounce it. So you'll have to figure that out. But it's kind of a, a sandpaper-like paper. It feels like an emery board. I don't know if you could do your fingernails on it, but you could try. But it feels, it feels exactly like an emery board. So, and it comes in different colors, but it's got a nice texture to it. And we'll play with it and we'll see what we can come up with. But that might be an option. You might like that. That sandpaper like paper and it comes in several different colors too. So that's another way of using color in, in your background with your silver point. And then the last thing I think we have here is a color pencil paper. You can use plain old color pencil paper. It's a, it's a um, lightweight paper. It's a very malleable paper, but you can put, if you're hoping to do that, move your drawing around a little bit, then you can use uh, the grand, just one or two layers on this soft paper and try that. So there you have it. You have several options of paper. You have several options of board if you like that. And you have options of texture. You can, you can play with texture. There are all kinds of things that you can do with your ground for silver point. So it, you can do texture with your paper. You can do texture with your ground. You can do texture with your brushes. So there's just all kinds of fun things to do and just getting hung up in the fact that there's only one value. You lose so many ways to, to express your creativity, like with the textures and the backgrounds and 
mix in the colors and things like that. So there are all kinds of fun things that you can do with Silver Point, and we'll start to get into those in our next video. So these are your things to have ready for your next video. Decide what papers you want to try out. Have your ground ready. Have your brushes or sponges ready. I looked at uh, the little sponges they roll for, for printers, printers that do the little rolling sponges. I bet you could use those too. I almost, I was tempted to buy one, but I didn't. But you could try that. That would be fun to just, to just roll your ground on. Especially if you're somebody that likes a smooth one. That would be a great way to get a smooth one. So there's our grounds. So get your grounds ready. Get your papers ready. We're going to, in the next video, we'll go over how to apply it. So have everything ready and we'll get on to that next. See you then. Bye-bye.